In this presentation, I'm going to answer the question, why are solutions to initial value problems unique? Why is there only one solution to linear initial value problems? And the uh, basic um, case I'm going to look at is the most basic first order uh, initial value problem and first order dif differential equation. Now the intended audience for this video is anyone who's had a first course in calculus and might have seen the um, um, exponential growth and exponential decay ideas. All right, so let me show you uh, what I mean and let's get underway. I'll share my uh, oh, my screen with you. Just, just give me a second. Let me just share my screen. Okay, there we go. All right, so why are solutions to linear initial value problems unique? All right, so I'm going to answer that question in a real basic way that a high school student who's studying calculus would be able to understand. By the way, it's a very, very deep question. The question of uniqueness is very, very deep. Okay, so suppose I've got a basic initial value problem, or IVP. Here the dash means uh, the derivative, so Y dash would mean, say, dy dt. K and alpha are constants. And this is the sort of basic, one of the basic problems you see in a first course in calculus or a first course in differential equations. Now, this kind of problem is a starting point for differential equations and modeling. And in particular, when we formulate models that feature exponential growth or exponential decay, for example, if you're looking at a population size that's growing very quickly or decreasing very quickly, this is the kind of model um, that, uh, the kind of equation that appears when uh, uh, out of modeling. So T might be time, um, and y, might, y of T might be the size of the population at time T. Now, if K is positive, then the population is growing. If K is negative, then the population would be decaying. And alpha would be the initial uh, size of the population at time T equals zero. Now, over here, we've got a, a the blue curve is uh, the exponential function, say, e to the t. And when you study this kind of problem in calculus or in differential equations, you learn that a solution to this problem is an exponential type function. But the question is, is this the only solution to that problem? Now, it's not too hard to verify that this really is a solution to this problem. So let me just go through and um, show you that. Okay, so this is pretty standard. So say... Uh, Let's take our function and differentiate it. Now, if I differentiate this, the k comes to the front, and the k is a constant. So that's basically the left-hand side of our differential equation. What's the right-hand side? It's just k constant times uh, the function y. Okay, and you can see that these things are equal. Okay, so this is satisfied. The only thing we need to check now is the initial condition. So let's go up to our function, plug in t equals zero. I'll get e to the zero, which is one, and just multiply it by alpha, and that shows that the initial condition 
be satisfied. Okay, now um, you might be thinking, come on Chris, I, I know that. Please tell me something I don't know. Well, we're getting to the good part now. I'm just trying to convince you or remind you that this really is a solution to this problem. But let me ask the question again. Is this the only solution to the initial value problem one? That's a very, very deep question. So let me present the following result or theorem. The following initial value problem has one and only one solution. And the solution is given by this function here or this, this solution here. Okay? So how am I going to prove that? Well, the proof is, is pretty simple and um, I, I think it's a great proof because it is understandable to pretty much anyone who knows basic calculus. Okay, so let me share it with you and um, I hope you like it too. So we're going to assume there are two solutions to this problem, the solution that we've just verified and some, say, different function, u, u of t. Now, it's going to turn out that the, this function and this function are identically equal to each other. They are one and the same function. What this means is that this it means that if two solutions exist, well, they've got to be the same. Okay, in other words, this is the only solution. All right, so how do we do that? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let me show you. We are going to consider the following ratio. Okay, and I'm going to show that this ratio is always equal to 1, independent of t. How do I do that? Well, I'm going to show that this has a uh, derivative that's 0, and then I'm going to use um, the uh, initial um, uh, condition to show that, that uh, the constant is, is, is indeed 1. Okay? So let me differentiate this using the uh, quotient rule. So if I apply the quotient rule here, I take the derivative of what's down here and multiply it with this. Uh, I'm sorry, I take the derivative of what's up here and multiply it with this. All right, sorry about that. So u dash, then minus the derivative of what's down here multiplied with this. So the derivative of this, k comes to the front. And then it's all over the square of the denominator. Okay, so if you'll see now, there's a common factor of alpha and e to the kt in the numerator. So I can take that out and I can cross off one of these um, factors of alpha e to the kt in the denominator. Okay, so if I cross those off, what am I left with? Um, so that goes, that goes, I'm left with ku, and one of these on the denominator will go. All right, now, what is this? We've assumed that u is a solution to this initial value problem. That means that u prime equals ku, or u prime minus ku equals zero. So this nu uh, numerator is zero. So let's just call this star. All right, so what does this mean? It means that the derivative of this quotient is zero. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, we know from basic calculus that if the derivative of a function is zero everywhere, then that function must be a constant.
Okay. So if this is constant everywhere, all, all I really need to do to show this is that show that c equals 1. How can I do that? Well, I haven't used this initial condition yet. Okay. So if, if t equals 0, what's ha what happens? Well, this, because um, use a solution to this problem, u of 0 will be alpha. And I just plug in t equals 0 here. I'll get alpha e to the 0, which is uh, 1. So um, I'll get the alphas will cancel, and I'll get c equals 1. So what do I know now about this, quo uh, this uh, quotient? It's identically equal to 1. Okay. And so what does it mean if I rearrange it? It means that u is identically equal to, bring that up there, to this, which is just y. Okay? So, we've now showed what we wanted to show. We've assumed there were two solutions. We've shown that, actually, the two solutions must be one and the same solution. So that's it. That's why the initial value problem here has one and only one solution. Okay? Now, in, in textbooks, this idea is, is glossed over a lot. Okay? People know that the exponential solves this kind of problem, but the actual... Um, proof and the idea that the exponential is the only solution to this initial value problem is really not discussed very much. So I thought I'd, I'd fill in a little gap with as simple a proof as I could pro possibly provide. So what do you think? Are you convinced that there's only one solution to the initial value problem now? A good question, if I can just share my screen with you again. Okay, we know that this problem has one and only one solution. What about a slightly more general problem? Say um, ky plus b, where k and b are constants. Does that have... one and only one solution. What about if k and b were functions of t? Does that problem have one and only one solution? Well, what do you think? Do you think you can put in the missing steps and uh, build uniqueness for the more general problem? If you can, put it in the comments section below. Thanks for watching. Um, I hope you can give me your thoughts on what you think about uniqueness of solutions to equations, initial value problems, and any feedback, any suggestions are always welcome. Thanks for watching.